Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, delighted to be here talking with you about a brand new uh, research study that really does, I hope, address one of the biggest data gaps that I think we have in Australia, and that is prevalence nationally of all forms of child abuse and neglect. Clearly, uh, from all of the uh, data references that we've already heard about today, we rely on those reports through states and territories of contact with statutory child protection departments, which is a, a, a poor um, um, proxy, if you like, for the real problems that um, are faced by children and young people across the country. So I'm one of nine chief investigators, uh, led by uh, Ben Matthews from QUT, who were successful in putting in a grant application to the National Health and Medical Research Council um, on our team, as well as having, uh, I think, three international um, uh, collaborators, one of those is David Finkelhor, who of course is legendary in the child abuse and neglect space and has been involved um, with uh, similar kind of prevalence studies in the US. So this is the first study. It is um, uh, in line with recommendations made by the Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse, who of course pointed out the same problem in the child sexual abuse space as we see right across the board with all forms of child maltreatment, that we don't have good data on which to rely. So the study, which is uh, well underway and goes through until 2020, will be uh, conducting computer-assisted telephone interviews with 10,000 respondents. Um, the largest group, so half of those, 5,000, will be young people aged 16 to 24. So those are young people who were born between 1997 and 2006. So they, because the study is, from an ethical perspective, um, relying on retrospective reports, they're obviously thinking back to their childhoods, which are in the early 2000s. So that's quite recent. Um, and then the remainder of the sample will be 10, 000, sorry, 1,000 in each of the next kind of 10 year deciles. Um, so they'll be talking progressively going backwards about their childhood in the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s. Um, those, uh, the different forms of maltreatment that are being assessed, as I said, will be all forms, so physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, neglect and exposure to domestic violence. And uh, the team were very um, excited to hear the news uh, uh, last week that um, we have received some extra funding from the National Office of Child Safety to supplement the grant funding in order to be able to ask um, some quite detailed questions relating specifically to sexual abuse experiences in an institutional context. Um, so that's um, a really important element. We're very grateful to the National Office of Child Safety for that support. Um, another unique element of the study is that we have a number of collaborators um, on the team who are uh, experts in measuring health outcomes. And so the, the grant has a strong focus around that, which of course, again, is another of those areas that we lack good data on is what is the consequences of child maltreatment in terms of the burden of disease. So we'll be looking extensively at physical and mental health consequences and again looking across the lifespan because the structure of the different cohorts allow us to look at both those younger people but also those who are um, uh, you know, in their 60s, 70s, etc. Um, most importantly though, I think this study will have some really serious implications for both policy and practice reform in Australia. As I said, it's the first um, prevalence study of its kind uh, in Australia, but one of the limitations as with any piece of research is that it is a, it's a baseline, it's a one-off study. However, having trialled the methodology, if um, there was to be uh, further studies of this nature um, commissioned in the future, so for example in five years' time, with a new cohort of young people who were born you know, five years later, you would be then be able to compare um, between those two cohorts, so the younger cohort in our study, and any future cohorts that are recruited um, in five years' time, ten years' time, to actually be able to look at trends and hopefully see reduction in the various forms of child abuse and neglect 
as a result of the kind of um, prevention and early intervention um, services, um, which go from you know child safe organisational practices through to all of the things that we've been hearing about um, the importance of today. Uh, and so I think that um, the other way in which the study really will have important um, policy implications and also um, evaluation design uh, implications is that providing this baseline data will then allow for local evaluations to be able to benchmark against national norms in terms of the various forms of child maltreatment in different contexts, different age groups, etc. So that when looking, for example, at a place-based initiative in the future, you'd be able to benchmark and be able to see whether your strategy is actually leading to a, a reduction um, in the various forms of harm compared to, to this. So the, the work isn't done, it's really just the first piece in a, a series of steps that will be needed in order to be able to um, contribute to our, our knowledge. Um, I'm going to wrap up there, but um, I'm happy to take uh, uh, questions um, later on and discuss further with you. But uh, I do want to acknowledge my collaborators and, uh, and in particular, the additional funding from the Australian Government through the National Office for Child Safety. Thank you.